Okay, so this question talks about uh, whole numbers and ends in 4. So when you have a whole number that ends in 8, you always get a number that ends in 4. Okay, so let's write down a few numbers that end in 8. So 18, 28, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, if you're not sure what's going on, then always just try things. You know, it says when, a, when you halve a whole number that ends in 8, so write down some whole numbers that end in 8, halve them and see what happens. Um, just try something, guys. If you're not sure what's going on, just try. Um, follow the information and see what happens. So here then, write down an example to show that Bernard is wrong. Uh, well, we could have 9, that becomes, uh, sorry, 18, that becomes 9. So ends in four and so forth. Uh, does not end in four better language. Okay, so that would be an example where it doesn't work. Um, Alice talks about prime numbers here. Uh, so we've got to remember what prime numbers are. It's really important we uh, practice this. Um, so prime numbers only have two factors. That's the definition of them. And that's why 1 is not a prime number, because 1 only has one factor itself. Um, so prime numbers, so you should learn the first 10 prime numbers really, guys. Um, so you've got some idea what's going on. So 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, uh, 17, 19, 23, and so forth. So you need to make sure you do understand that prime numbers only have two factors. Two as the factors one and two, three the factors one and three, five the factors one and five, and so forth. So she says all whole numbers that end in seven are prime numbers. So again, it's saying all whole numbers that end in seven. So let's write some down. Well, they're given a seven and seventeen, so the next one will be twenty-seven, uh, the next one after that will be thirty-seven, the next one after that will be forty-seven. Well, yeah, those two are prime numbers, but we notice that twenty-seven has the factors 1, 3, 9, 27. So all of those so will be factors of 27. So factors, remember, are numbers that go into a whole number that goes into another whole number and leaves no remainder. So 1 times 27 is 27, 3 times 9 is 27. So they're factors of 27. So when it says you must give a reason for your answer, you're going to say Alice is wrong. As 27 is not a prime number, as it has four factors. Okay, so again, we've given reasons and we've thought about what prime numbers are. So question 9, um, it asks us to do a calculation, a uh, long multiplication calculation. Um, there's a whole ream of methods for doing these. Um, I'll do a couple just to kind of remind you of uh, ways of doing this. So we could break up 247 into its component parts. So 200 times 63, 40 times 63, and 7 times 63. Um, the reason we do this, of course, is because 200 is the same as doing 2 times 63 then times the answer by 100. Um, 40 times 63 is the same as doing 4 times 63 and then times by 10. And 7 times 63 is what it is. Um, so there's lots of ways of doing this. 2 times 63 is 126. And then you times by 100, which means you move up twice to become 12,600. 4 times 63, well, 4 63s is 240, 252 times by 10 would make it um, 2,520. And 7 times 63, um, again, 7 60s um, is going to be 420. And 7 threes are 21, so that's 441. And then when you add all those together to get your final uh, answer, uh, we get a 1, 2 and 4 makes 6, 6 and 5 is 11, plus 4 is 15, carry them all over, and we'll carry the 100 over, um, 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5, and then the 1, so 15,561. Uh, 15, 
Um, another way of doing this would be to use the uh, Gelosia or Chinese method or the Napier's method, however you believed it. Okay, I'll be there first. So I break up the uh, calculations into their individual digits and create multiplication boxes, put in the diagonal lines, because <coughs> this method, remember, it means add up the diagonal digits uh, that come from doing the multiplications. So 2 times 6 is 12, 4 times 6 is 24, 3 times 6 is 18, 3 times 3 is 9, so 0 in there, and then 9, 4 threes is 12, and 2 threes is 6, so 0 there and 6. So you can notice with this method then, uh, you do the multiplication with the digits, so 2 times 6 is 12, 1 in the top uh, part of the box and 2 in the bottom part, and then you add up diagonally. So what that means basically is you're going to add up that, and that, 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 and then that. So you're going to add up diagonally as you do this uh, method. So we get a 9. Uh, it would help if I did the right calculation, of course. This was 2, 4, 7. Um, so 7, 6 is a 42, and 7, 3 is a 21. Okay, now the reason I recognise that I've done the wrong calculation is because one of the quick ways of checking a long multiplication is when you do the end digits of the two numbers you're multiplying, 7 times 3 is 21, that ends in a 1, so our answer should end in a 1. What I had here was going to end in a 9, which wouldn't work, but now I've got the 1 there, so we add up diagonally, so we've got a 1 there. 2 and 2 and 2 make 6. 4 and 4 is 8, plus the 1 is 9, plus the 6 is 5. Um, so that's 4, 8, 9, 15. So 5 goes down and the 1 carries over to the next diagonal. So we've got a 2 plus 2 is 4, plus the 1 is 5, and then we've got a 1 on its own. So we come around the outside to get the final answer, which is 1, 5, 5, 6, 1. And as we can see, the two answers are the same. So either method gave you the same answer. Um, again, there are lots of other ways of doing this. Um, you could break this down into individual hundreds, forties and seventies, sixties and threes, and do lots of calculations with that as well. Either way, you've got to learn a method that works to give you the correct answer of 15,561 if you have these numbers to multiply. So practice long multiplication, a popular topic, guys.